Ah, hello everybody! And how is everybody doing today? Oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Oh, I'm doing just great. Thank you for asking. Oh, and a special shout today to you, Mark Detheridge. Are you listening? Because this is the flight that you have requested today. Now, how did this come about? Well, I got an email from Mark Detheridge, oh, about six, seven, eight weeks ago, and he said, my name is Mark and I live in Ashland, Kentucky, USA. He said he believes I was one of the priests at his wedding some 26 years ago. Wow. Mm. Well, it's true. I was a priest in residence at Holy Family Church in Ashland, Kentucky some 26 to 27 years ago. And I did actually co-preside at his wedding. So I am delighted to make your acquaintance once again, Mark. After I left a Holy Family in Ashland, the bishop had me go into the chancery to become the IT director. Oh, what a change that was. But Ashland was my last pastoral assignment before going into the chancery. Anyway, Mark said he stumbled upon this channel and was surprised to recognize me. Well, I sometimes look in the mirror and I'm surprised to recognize me too. <laughs> He thanked me for helping everybody to fend off the current insanity. Oh, and yes, isn't it an insanity? And yes, these escape videos do help enormously, don't they? Right. Well, Mark, today we're going to make the flight that you requested. And you said, could I fly between Huntington, K-H-T-S, and Charleston, K-C-H-S. And of course the answer is yes! Ryanair 186 can fly anywhere, anytime. <laughs> now, I did check to see if there were any airlines that do the route direct, and there isn't. You will have to go to some other place to change in order to get to Charleston. So we are going to make today's flight Ryanair 186 is going to be a corporate executive flight in which we make our own flight plan. And there are executive flights that do fly between the two points, so it won't be unusual. I also checked to see if there were any sceneries available for both of these two locations. I did find some FSX scenery on AV Sim and downloaded it and tried it out in both locations. But unfortunately, the result wasn't too good. Uh, they were, of course, very old and they don't work too terribly well with P3D version 5. So we are going to have to use the P3D native scenery. And it's not all that bad. It's actually quite good. You know, P3D does a fairly good job of scenery with the latest revision. So we'll do that today. So if you're ready, then buckle up and let's get ourselves ready. We need to go into pre-flight and check the weather and make ourselves a flight plan. Are you ready, Mark? Let's do it then. Well, Mark, here we are. We're in windy.com. And right here is 
Huntington Airport, just across the Big Sandy River, right here, you see, and on the south side of the Ohio River, a big river there. And here is Ironton, which of you know, of course, is directly across the river from Ashland, which is on this side of the river. And that's where you and I met. Distance between Ashland and Huntington is a mere 15 miles. But interestingly enough, I've never been to the airport in Huntington. I've never flown in or out of it either. So this is going to be a first for me. So let's have a look at the weather, shall we? It says currently the wind is 080 degrees, 4 knots, visibility 10 statute miles, broken clouds at 5,500 feet, overcast at 7,000 feet. Temperature, oh, is a chilly 8 degrees, oh dear. Well, no matter, it is 2 degrees plus 2 anyway, plus 2 degrees in England at the moment. So we are a little bit warmer. Altimeter is 2995, which is pretty close to being standard. Having a look at the runways, if the wind continues in this direction, it looks like we are going to be departing from runway 12, which is right over here. And looking at the airport, we are going to be parked somewhere in the vicinity where this aircraft is parked. We'll be right about here. So it looks like for our departure, we're going to have to go up here, cross over the runway, and then take off on runway 12 if the wind holds, and that is what the tower gives us for a departure. Elevation is 828 feet. Okay, let's have a look now at windy.com for Charleston. And here it is. Here's the city of Charleston right on the coastline and in that estuary. Very important harbor that was. And the airport is up here. Right now, the wind is calm, visibility 10 statute miles, no clouds under 12,000 feet, temperature minus 4, altimeter 3022, a little higher than it was in Huntington. But VFR, and has been for the past several hours. Now, looking over here at the airport, this is the, looking at the whole thing, I'm not sure which runway we'll be coming in on. The likelihood is that we will be on perhaps runway 03, I think. That's, that's a guess. But looking at the airport, we need to remember that there are some restrictions here. All of this side of the airport is restricted to military aircraft only. This is an Air Force base, so we better not stray into the wrong area. These buildings that you see here, this is the FBO, the Fixed Based Operators. This is where people will go with the light aircraft and park and refuel. And down here, this is the commercial aircraft terminal down here. And there are two little satellites coming out of the terminal building. And when we come in, we'll be docking at one or the other of them. I'm not sure which one it will be, but it'll be one of them. So that's the airport that we will be arriving in at. All right, let's go on into Simbrief and make ourselves a flight plan. So we are Ryanair, we are 186, and we are going from KHTS, and we're going to go to KCHS.
And here's the alternate that it's given us. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll find out in just a moment. Our airframe is this. And here is our registration, which is going to stand out a little bit among all the other aircraft in the vicinity because American aircraft registrations always begin with the letter N for November. Its scheduled flight time is 1 hour 35. Departure runway, runway 30. Well, that's going to be interesting. Okay, arrival 03. Passengers, well, we are full. And we're going to have one ton of freight, of course, which is caviar and champagne, since all of our passengers are going to be executives, of course. This is an executive flight. And there is a very simple, straightforward flight route. And this is the route that is given us. Departing here right from the tri-state region, Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky. Straight down Columbia, into South Carolina, and then down into Charleston. And it, oh, Charlotte. Charlotte is the uh, alternate airport should something go pear-shaped. Okay, let's save this and... Let's generate the flight plan and see what it gives us. Here's the flight plan. Let's see what it gives us. It's given us a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. That's good. There's our block fuel that we need to have. Airtime is one hour and three minutes. And this, this is the flight routing. No remarks, it says. And down here, this, of course, is the Ryanair 186. That's us. There's our flight cruising altitude. And there is the flight route. And KCLT Charlotte, that is our alternate. And we're Ryanair. Over here, we're going to need to know its cost index 6. We'll need to know the average wind and speed on our journey, which is there. Here's our fuel that we're going to require to get in. Reserves 2,947. And the trip and taxi is likely to be 3,002 kilograms. No tankering recommended. Here is the full route. Now, if these are the departure and arrival runways, then I'll be posting this exactly as it is in the information box down below. Now, we're going to need to know the wind information for our descent. And we'll need to know it for flight level 200 and for flight level 150 and for flight level 100 or 10,000 feet. Now let's zoom down and have a look at the weather, see if there's anything significant that we need to look at. Ah, there's a little bit of a frontal movement coming in that general direction, but it shouldn't interfere with us. But basically, it looks like we are going to have tailwinds. Now, this is closer to our flight level. This is flight level 340. And looking here, we've got some fairly strong tailwinds going in, which, of course, will cut down our flight time, which is always good, of course. I like tailwinds. And then looking down at our profile... Here's where we take off from Huntington. We go up. We actually, our top of climb is just above this wavy line you see here, which is the troposphere. 
So we're going to be actually flying slightly above the troposphere until we get to our top of descent and when it's all the way down here to South Carolina. Okay, I think we've got the information that we need. So now it's time to go into Navigraph charts and pull out the charts that we need. Well, here we are looking at the map in Navigraph charts and here you can see Ashland right here and here you can see right here is in this vicinity is where the airport is located or oh, right here I think it is right there and that's this is the Ohio River and here is the big Sandy River going right down here which is the border between West Virginia and Kentucky. Yes, this is where I served as a priest, right here in Ashland, Kentucky. All right, zooming out. Let's look at the whole area here. And here's Charleston down here. Okay, we'll go up here to flights, new flight from Simbrief and bring this one in. We'll click on this to open up the charts list because we are going to need to pin the airport information for this particular airport. And it says, according to the uh, flight plan, that we should expect to depart from runway 30. Well, we shall have to see whether that's the case. And it does not give us any kind of a SID, so we will just presume that it's a straight out departure. Over here, we'll open up the charts list for our destination. We're going to need to know this, so I'm going to pin that. And here you can see it says on this restricted area, all of this. That's because that is the Air Force Base. And here is the fixed based operators buildings. And down here is the terminal map. And here are the terminal parking stands. It's saying we're going to be coming in on this particular star which is the Osprey 7. So if it's the Osprey 7, I'm going to pin that to the bottom. And then it's saying we're coming in on runway 03. So let's find runway 03. Well, there's the RNAV Y, the RNAV Zulu. Let's pin this and let's look at this one. And it looks like this is the approach into the airport right here. We would be coming straight down here and then making our approach onto runway 03 here. So if that's the case, if we are coming in on this one, we are RNAV Zulu runway zero three and and there it is we'll be coming in on the Rechi route to bring us all the way in to land on runway three and here it is mandatory to be at four thousand feet at this particular point that's our initial fix all right so I'll close these down and we now have our route. Okay, are you ready then, Mark? Are you ready to go on into the cockpit and get ourselves started? Ah, oh, there you are, Mark. Come on in and take your seat. Buckle up and let's get ourselves ready to go down to Charleston, South Carolina. We're here 
in Huntington, West Virginia. And for a P3D standard airport, this is actually rather nice. It's got plenty of detail, but not, of course, as highly detailed as a professional designer would make it. But the views are pretty good, including the big fuel tank over there to the side and the weir parked right here in front of the terminal building, as I would imagine this is. So we are not doing too bad. So if we get ourselves ready now now you haven't done this before but this is how we start an, a 737 we first of all we turn on the power battery switch we make sure that we've got enough voltage to be able to run the fuel pumps in order to be able to start this the APU and this is the auxiliary power unit the APU is located in the tail of the aircraft and what it will do is it has two big functions. One, it's a generator that will give 115 volts of power and it's also a compressor uh, that will blow air into the cabin for warming or cooling, whichever way. But when needed, it will force the air into the turbines to get them spinning and we need to get them spinning before we put the fuel in and then that ignites the jet engines. It's a very interesting process. As soon as this light turns blue I can switch to the generator then. There it is. Now I have 115 volts and pretty much everything lights up at this point. And that allows us then to do the rest of what we need to do. So I've checked here, we have 115 volts. So now I'm going to turn on the IRS. This is, I have two GPS systems in this. And I turn on the galley, <laughs> always hoping that we'll get a cup of tea. Emergency exit lights, no smoking, bars and seat belts. Over here, I go down this panel then and turn on the left and the right window heat. And given that the temperatures are what they are today, minus 7 degrees, I'm certainly going to turn on the probes to get them good and warm. Now I'm going to turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps. The lights over here show that the forward service hatch is open and the equipment, those are the air stairs, they are down and extended, just as you can see in this picture. Right over here, I'm going to now turn on the APU bleed and then I'm going to turn on the circulating fans and then the packs. Listen. There's the rush of the air coming in to warm the aircraft up. And then down here, I'm going to turn on the steady light so people know that we are working on the aircraft. This is a grey, grey morning here in Huntington. Very grey and cold. Look, there's snow on the ground. I have a program called Active Sky and it gives me the real live weather conditions at the particular time that I'm doing this. So this isn't bad. Mm. All right, now that we've got the basic things all going here, now it's time to enter the GPS position. So here I'm going to be on this. I'm now going to go to, I'm going to clear this and I've checked that we have the latest nav data in it and that the program is showing active position and we are starting out at KHTS so I've put in KHTS 
which is the designator of Huntington and I'm not going to put in a gate because we really don't know what the gates would be here but I am going to put in the information that it's got and then that gives us our GPS. Now I go to the route and I have to put the information in again so it is uh, KHTS KHTS and we're going to go to KCHS and we are over here we're Ryanair 186 so RYR -R, and we have 186 to go on to the next page and we go direct to Jonen J-O-N-E-N and then we go direct to Unjam U-N-J-A-M and then that's it we're done. Activate, execute, go to fix, and now we'll put in the fix for KCHS. KCHS, and we want a four mile circle, we want a 10 mile circle, and we want a 30 mile circle. Go over to descent, go to forecast, and now we need to check the transition level in the United States is flight level 180. So I need to put that in. And then we need to get the information for these three flight levels. 200, 150 and 10,000. The Q&H at our destination is 1024. And then the uh, flight level 200, the wind direction and speed is 296 at 66. So 296 at 66, that's quite fast, 66 knots. And then it's 296 at 46, 296 at 46, at 15,000. And 305 at 32, 305 and 32 at 10,000 feet. And execute that. Now for departures, here we need to go in and listen to the ground ATIS, which is 125.2. Tri-State Ferguson, airport information, Sierra 1733, wind, Zulu, visibility 138 at 4, greater than 20 miles, sky condition, temperature, ceiling 10,000, broken, dew point, altimeter, minus 7, minus 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, 4, landing and departing, runway 1, 2, VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft read back, hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Sierra. We have Sierra, so we're going to be, be departing on runway 12. There are no SIDs, so we don't have to put anything in for that. Now, departure, arrival. We're thinking, I'm looking now at an advanced weather program. This is, I'm looking over here at a program that is associated with Active Sky. And it's telling me that the runway currently in use is runway 33. So I'm going to put in runway 33, ILS runway 33. So I'll put that in. And it's asking us here, what is our final approach? The star is going to be this one. And we will be coming in and Unjam will be our 
transition. Now I'm going to go to legs, I'm going to switch this to the plan, and I'm going to go through this to see if there are any discontinuities. All right, now stepping through, and there it is. Now I'm going to make a new waypoint just off to the west of shrimp. So I'm going to put shrimp to the bottom, and this would be not 270, 60, 50, 250, so 250, and at 4 miles, and put that right there. Let's see how that looks. Yes, that looks good. And then now it joins it up nicely so it swings around and then comes in for a final. Okay. Right, I'm going to put weather on here now and data on yours. Can I do yours? I'm going to put terrain on yours and then activate the data. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to go to the route and perform the initialization. Now our reserves are 2,947, our trip is 3,002, that comes to 5,949, which is 5.9. 5.9, and I'll put that in there, that's the plant fuel trip. The Trip and tax is 2.9, 2.9. Double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything. Put in number six for our cost index. Our cruising altitude is 350. So 350 and put that up there. The cruise wind, looking at that, is 293 at 64. 293 at 64. Transition altitude in the United States is flight level 180. And execute that. N1 limit, well it is a minus. Which is very cold. Takeoff, we'll do, here we will do flaps 10. Center of gravity, just double click that and it gives me the center of gravity and what it should be on the trim wheel. One click on each of these gives me the values for V1, V rotation and V2 liftoff. Okay, we are ready to do the rest of this now. So if we're departing on runway 1, 2, then we will be needing a heading of 118 degrees. So, 118 degrees. I'll put that in here, 118. I'll do the heading of 118 over here. We're going to be at, I'll put 118 over here for you as well. We're going to be flying at 35,000 feet, so I'm going to put that in here in anticipation. Now while I'm at this point, I'm also going to put 35,000 feet up here in our pressurization. This is for the cabin pressure. So that's 35,000 feet up there. The elevation of the airport is 46 feet when we get to Charleston so I'm going to put the landing altitude as 50. This calculates the pressure inside the cabin. Alright, so that's looking good. Now I'm going to put the Mac over here of 145. Got that. Now, flight director on here and there, and what we do is we push these buttons and we have good flight plan. So, arm the throttle, 
BOR1 we'll be using. Turn off, turn off the flight, your damper, it's lights gone out, looking good on that. Turn this to RTO for the anti-skid. Right, we are looking good and ready to make our departure. Uh, I'm going to put in the decision height of 245 in my barometer here so that that is ready. Okay, now I'm going to contact the tower and ask for a Southern departure. Huntington Ground, Ryanair 186 with uniform request taxi for takeoff south departure. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short at runway 12 via taxiway Alpha Golf contact tower on 118.5 when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 12 via taxiway Alpha Golf Ryanair 186. Right, we are cleared to go to runway 12. Hold short, runway 12 is the information, so let's do a quick before start check. So fuel is checked, windows locked, seatbelt signs up. Let's bring the stairs and close the door. Seatbelt signs are on, MCP is programmed and set. Takeoff thrust is done, CDU pre-flight is done. Rudder air alarm trim is clear. Taxi takeoff briefing. Now, since we are going to need to go to runway two, we need to reverse and have our tail go to the right and our nose to the left. All right, anti collision light is now on and Lights are out, so we are ready now to ask for a pushback. So I'm going to go here. We want to turn the nose to the left, 90 degrees, select the tug. And if you're ready, are you all buckled up? You set? Everything is set at your end. Everything is looking good, I think. All right. In that case, then, I'll... Turn on the TCAS and we'll contact the ground. Target to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that, ready to push. Tail to the right. Parking brake release, please. Parking brake is released. Now, which engine would you like to start today? Left the Brakes number released. one and number two. Number one, all right. In that case then, I'm going to switch to number one up here. I'm going to turn off the heating pumps because we need now to redirect the blowers Actually, into the engines. And over here, you'll see the engine starts in a moment. So switching now to number one, the start valve has opened. The N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel to the engine to get the ignition going. So 18, it's climbing very nicely. 23, S24, bringing in the fuel. Now we need to make sure that we get a climb on the engine gas temperature that's coming up. We're looking for the low oil light pressure to go out. There it is. We're getting a good start. Everything is spinning up very nicely. We should hear the engines in just a moment. There, the engines have ignited. Okay, now we're looking for 115 volts up there, which we have. Now I'm going to start engine number two. The start valve has opened. It's starting to spin up here. When it gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel. Push back complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Brake set. 
and going to flaps 10. There we go, bringing in the fuel now. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the slip release vents on your right now in flight. Thank you, gentlemen. We're looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. It has. We're getting a good start. See this little red tick mark here? Well, there was one for the other side. When the generators are running in a stable condition, that little tick mark will go out, which allows us to switch then to the generators for our power. We have 150 volts showing from engine number two, and that tick mark looking for that to go off. It did. We now have stable power coming from the main engine, so I'm switching to the main engines. I'm turning on the packs again, so we've got the heat going. I'm turning off the APU bleed, and I'm turning off the APU. Now I'm going to turn on the taxi lights, so that we can taxi over to the main runway. All right, we're ready to do our taxi now with generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice, uh, we're not using it at the moment, isolation valve is good, engine start even idle, detent, right door is locked, recall is checked, flight controls checked, flaps we have green light, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake RTO, Speed brake lever down, detent. Ground equipment is now clear, so we're clear now to go to the to the taxi. All right, here we go. Give a little boost. It pushed us back a little bit far, but that's all right. We can handle that. We are Ryanair. We can do anything. get up there we're going to have to cross over I'm presuming that the there is a taxiway with this scenery which incidentally is quite detailed for B3D standard I mean it really is quite good as I've never been to this airport I have nothing to compare it with but you have so you'll have to tell me if this is fairly accurate. All right, I'm gonna have to make a turn here. And I'm gonna cross over the active runway. All right. plenty of snow around here and it also gave a warning in the uh, notice that there is wildlife here too so there could be deer and birds it says so we shall have to look out for uh, any of that This is 
really quite detailed, quite detailed indeed. a lot like West Virginia with the hills. All right, we'll turn down here. And go to the whole short line and then get takeoff turns. These taxiways are a little narrow. Go to the tower and ask for clearance. Huntington Tower, Ryan Air 186, Lydia's runway 12, South Departure. Ryan Air 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 12, departure to the South, approved. Cleared for takeoff, runway 12, Ryan Air 186. Alright, I'm turning on all the lights. I'm switching now to the main lights and steady. I'm starting the clock. Going continuous on this. Let's just make a quick check. All right, takeoff briefing complete. Uh, engine bleeds are on. Engine start switch is continuous. Cabin is secure. Right, we are now set to take off. So make sure there's nothing coming and we'll taxi out into the runway and line up on the center line. Okay, we're lined up, so let's advance the power to N1. Power is stable, toga button push, full power. And we're rolling.
seatbelt signs on for just a little bit longer.
just slightly to our left. Right, going to flat two. We need to slow up a little bit. We don't want to make our approach too fast, otherwise it could uh, be a bit of a problem. But yeah, that looks like the airport out there.
is holding good. When we make our turn onto base and then we come back onto final, when we get to the 10 miles, DME miles to landing, then we will go to flaps 10. Heading 
everything here. I'm now resetting. This in case we have. Clear to end. We are cleared to land. Attendance cleared to land. And flaps are down. Gear is down. And I'm still coming in sideways. But shall I do it? What do you think? Shall we try? Okay, gear is down, flaps are down, everything is set. I have control. Ha <laughs> ha! Right, let's see how we do. We're on the glide slope. Still showing two white and two red. Oh, and there's a jet that just took off. 1,000. 2-1 we'll cross over that so this will take us a little bit to get to the uh, the terminal building hope that we don't get lost Fighter G 
jets at this airport because this is an Air Force base and hopefully we won't encounter any of them while we're on the taxiway because we do have to cross over the threshold of the runway ahead. bad scenery you know for P3D it's not fancy but it has all of the features in it that are needed all right making sure nothing is coming in nothing is on the runway we're going to cross over here straight down there and then we cross over the main active runway to get down to the terminal building. Fortunately these Navigraph charts are very good and give plenty of detail as to where we are. Right, we're coming up on 3315 intersection here. Making sure that there's no aircraft coming in on final we don't want to have a problem with uh, with us being a kamikaze for somebody else, do we? Okay, we're crossing here. We're clear of the runway. And there's the Charleston VOR over on our right. Yeah, we keep going now down this one and it takes us right to the terminal building which is directly ahead
back and go into the other one then. We'll go in on this one. Service hatch is open, equipment is down, people are rushing off. <laughs> oh well, they're off to get some of the, see some of the treats and delights of Charleston, no doubt. All right, we'll now do the cleanup. So, galley off. We just do a reverse now of everything that we did before. Turning everything up as we go along. And the probes are off and okay all of that is off lights are off fuel pumps are off APU is off battery is off shutdown is now complete well mark we made the flight now I know that a lot of flights make the connection at Charlotte, don't they? When they go from Huntington, at least that's what I seem to have found when I did a search. So we flew right by Charlotte on our way down. So we pretty much followed the route that you would have taken anyway, had you made the flight between uh, Huntington and Charleston. The only thing is we just didn't make that stop in the middle. So we are a much more efficient airline. What do you think? Hmm. It was a pleasure to make your acquaintance once again. It's been quite a few years since uh, I was in Ashland, but it always has a special place in my heart for the good people that were there. I hope that you enjoyed the flight. I hope that this was what you were hoping for. And please give my best to everyone there in Ashland at Holy Family and everyone else. I will see you on the next flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.